Father, in the name of Jesus, brothers and sisters, you are highly welcome on this evening video on trusting God in our generation on YouTube. I just highly welcome you all on this live video, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Concerning altars, evil altars, brothers and sisters, concerning altars that need to be built in our homes that will be able to meet God there at the point of our knees. Yes, brothers and sisters, hallelujah. God used Gideon to destroy an evil altar in his father's house. That things were changed for his life and his family. Brothers and sisters, so many times, so many at times in our life, there are so many things that are working against us that we need to work on and discover these same patterns that are happening in our life. The same cycle repeating itself over and over every year. We are going through the same problem. Nothing can be done, brothers and sisters, of these things. No matter how high you pray, everything's just is the same, which means there are evil authors speaking against you. You got to do something very, very serious about your families and friends. Otherwise, your life will not change. Nothing good will happen for you. These authors will be speaking against you against your life, your marriages, your business, your dream, your vision, in life with your children, things will be going on the other side, the opposite side of life. Brothers and sisters, the evil author will be broken and destroyed against your life and your family. For God promises and his purpose to come to pass for your life, these authors have to be broken and destroyed. They have to be destroyed, brothers and sisters. These evil authors have to be destroyed that is working against your life working against your destiny working against your dream the evil authors have to be destroyed through the power of the holy spirit god can destroy through the power of the holy spirit families and friends the evil authors have to be destroyed gideon for families and friends brothers and sisters i highly welcome you this platform is all about just going our generation families and friends thank you for joining this platform thank you for joining this family just go in our generation in our days in our time we need to trust god than ever before let us put our trust in, in god not man because men will fit us, but God will never fit us. Yes, we need to put our trust in God, not man. Because he's the one that will never fit us. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to say thank you for this platform. I bless you for your people. On trusting God in our generation, on YouTube channel. The YouTube channel, I bless you for those that are subscribed. Bless them in the family and bless those that are going to subscribe in the future. I lift them up before you this evening. Thank you for the new week that started today, Sunday. Bless Sunday to you all, families and friends. Hallelujah. Today is the 19th of March. God is good all the time. And all the time, he's good to us. Our God is great. He's wonderful God. His mercy into to all generations. We come to magnify his name this evening. To tell him that he is highly lifted up in this place. Jesus, you are highly lifted. You lift up your name high in this place. You keep from heaven to earth. To show the way, Papa, God. Thank you for your blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. For the mission of our sin, we come to tell you. Thank you for your blood. That is so powerful. That rain and move and Set the captive free and heal the sick in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, I, take, I thank you that I bless you. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me decree you go increase on this platform. This platform is for you, Lord. I'm just a vessel for honor you to bring forth your word to your people. Let me decree you go increase, oh God. Speak to the heart of your people this evening as your word is coming forth. Liberate and touch the heart of someone who is frustrated and, and downhearted and confused, oh God. In depression, oh God. Strengthen them, oh God. Give them peace in their heart, oh God. In the in the discomfort, in the distress this evening, oh God. Comfort them, oh God. Touch their heart, oh God. Show yourself to them strong, oh God. That Lord, you are able to change your story. Let us just continue to focus on you and have and persevere and have our focus on you, oh God, and trust in you. For you are the author and finisher of our faith. Greater is you that live in us and he that is in the world. No weapon from against us shall prosper. Father, I just want to bless your name and honor your name to have your way in this place. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, families, and friends, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, there are families authors in the Bible. The Bible talks about families authors. Some families authors, brothers and sisters, that have been built for the families. It also authors in what way they have been built. What is Built on the word of God, or, 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 or was it built on other worship and, and sacrificing of human blood? There are altars that people use to sacrifice human blood. It's not of God. Yes. So the altar that we are building in our home now to connect to God, brothers and sisters, it has been. Jesus' blood has paid all on our altar, brothers and sisters. His blood paid it all that without need to kill chicken, goat, or cow anymore. For any sacrifice to God. 
Jesus Christ had made all the sacrifice and the sacrifice. He was a sacrifice for us. His blood has paid it all for us. He paid it all, brothers and sisters. All to him we own. Sin. Sin. Our sins. He paid all, brothers and sisters. Jesus paid it all. All to him all. Since I left a crystal steam, he washes where the snow. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Hallelujah. Oh, to him I owe. Yeah. Since I left a crystal steam, he wore. She's where I know. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Hallelujah. Oh, to him we owe. Mm. See, I left a crystal stain. He wore. She's where I know. Brothers and sisters, Jesus' blood has paid it all on the cross for you and I. Sin has left a crystal stain. But Jesus' blood paid it all on the cross for you and I. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you about those. And those that built altars in a book, in the Holy Scripture, David built an altar to the Lord. In 2 Samuel 25, he built an altar. Hallelujah. Nehemiah built an altar to the Lord in Ezra. And also, Job be an altar to the Lord. Hallelujah. It's in Job 1 5. Solomon be an altar in 1 Kings 6 20 to 21. These people be an altar to God. Who are we building our altar for in our days? Are we building altars for God or are we building it for the devil? Because the altar that is built by God is only dedicated for God and only Him. That we need to worship on this altar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Families and friends, families altars in the Bible. Family altar is the place where gathering as a family to worship. Family altar is where family gather to worship, brothers and sisters. It can be in your home, in anywhere you feel or led by God to worship your Lord. The Bible has a lot to say about families altars in their effect on generation. Family altar has an effect on generation brothers and sisters family altars there are a lot of altars that have been built in the name of family today it has not been built in the name of god and because of that it is affecting the life of the present generation because it was built on demonic influences it's not on god it will not be on the power of god brothers and sisters so those altars need to be broken and destroyed Brothers and as God spoke to Gideon to go and destroy the altar in his father's house. The altar that was there would need to be destroyed. And he destroyed it. Gideon left, became successful. In the whole time, they were the poorest people that were there. But they were the people that were serving God the most. But they could not see the ways through. Things were very difficult for them. And so God met him at his point of his name. And the Holy Spirit spoke to him. Or tell him what to do. To go in his father's house. And destroy that demonic altar. That was there working against the family. Hallelujah. And that altar that was destroyed today. Brought liberation in Israel. That the Israelite went for war. And they, what? They, they, what? they won the war. Because of the, the altar that Gideon destroyed. Hallelujah. Because of the altar that Gideon destroyed. The Israelite won the war when it went for the war because of the obedience of Gideon. Brothers and sisters, Abraham had a family altar. In Genesis chapter 12, Abraham built an altar to worship the Lord. From, time, from that time on, family altar became part of Abraham's family tradition. Family altar became a tradition for Abraham, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Others become part of Abraham's family tradition. In fact, the Bible tells us that every time Abraham moved to a new place, he built an altar and worshipped God there. Whenever he moved anywhere, he always built an altar and worshipped God. Again, found in the book of Genesis 13 verse 18, 
that everywhere Abraham moved, he always built his family altar. He was going with that tradition to build family altar everywhere he moved. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Altars are very, very important for families and friends in a positive way. It is important for us that use it in a positive way. Not those that you use those altars in a negative way to meet up with the demons and dragons and evil things. Brothers and sisters, family altars also are common in time to, of Moses. In fact, one of the instructions that God gave to Moses was for the people to be an altar in their homes and offer sacrifices to them on the altar. Brothers and sisters, this is what God commanded Moses to tell his people to do. But families and friends, we are no longer worshipping or burning or killing cow on altars. Our altars in our room is where we will talk to God. We will meet him in the, on a daily basis. We will make sacrifices or give offering, fast and pray there, and call on the name of God there, and talk to our God, brothers and sisters, as he so meet Adam and Eve in the garden to talk to God. Whenever we go there to talk to God, we, as we speak to God there, brothers and sisters, we wait for him to speak to us as well. Hallelujah. When we speak to God, he also listening for, for him. We have to listen for him to also speak back to us. But sometimes we do not wait to, for God to speak to us because we are in hope and relief. And then what God wanted to say to us, he will not say it because we're not listening. Because we never have time to listen to God after speaking to him. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Then family authors are commonly in Moses' time. It will come in Moses' time. As I told you, there was instruction that was given to God to Moses that the people were supposed to build the altar in their homes to offer sacrifices unto God. In our days, we don't need to worship our God in true and in spirit while we have man, body, and soul on our altars now. We don't, we don't need to kill chicken, cow, goat, whatsoever it is. We, need to, we don't need to make any blood sacrifice on our altars. We only need to dedicate our altar with the scripture, with the holy word of God, to the power of the Holy Ghost, and sanctify it with the blood of Jesus, and cleanse it all the time, Every moment we need to cleanse our altar and ask God to bless our altars and we also make fast and pray on our altars and give offering and give and and, 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 and tie on our altars and release it to the church. Thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. It's in Exodus that he told them to offer sacrifices in their home. Exodus 20, 24. This way was a way for the people of to remember and go and worship God. The family authors can also get a great blessing in our families if we use it to worship God. If we use the family author to worship God, it can bring great blessing and liberation to the family. If we are using the family author for God, for example, if I have my author, I sanctify the author and dedicate the author to God. I go there and worship. I do my fast and prayer and call on the name of God there. When my children go there to pray, they will be as blessed. They will be blessed as well. So it has to be built on the name, in the name of the Lord, brothers and sisters. And the family will get be blessed on that altar as well. It should not be used. It should only be used for the worship of God. It can be a place where we come together to pray, read the Bible, and spend time with the Lord. However, it can also be a curse if we use it for evil purposes. It can be a curse. When we use it for evil purposes, brothers and sisters, it can be a curse when we use it for evil purposes. Hallelujah, Lord. Using it to worship false God or other can lead to family astray. It leads our family astray from the truth. Worshipping, worshipping the devil and the enemy and Satan and worshipping false gods and others can lead the family astray in every true family and friends. It is only God we need to worship on our altars that will be set in our homes. Hallelujah. Only God we need to worship on those altars, brothers and sisters. What the lesson that we learn from Gideon? Gideon's story reminds us that we must always be on the lookout for others in our lives. Gideon's story makes us to know that we should be always be on the lookout for others in our life. This idol can take form of anything that we put before God. Gideon's story, the way it leads to. Gideon's story makes us to know that we can be very, very careful 
how we take things in our life, brothers and sisters, this other can make, it can take a form of everything that we put before God. Families also are commonplace for others to reside, but they can be found anywhere. Gideon's story teaches us that we must be willing to break down these altars and dedicate our life to the Lord. Break down every evil altars and dedicate our life to God. Only then, we will be able to experience true peace and victory in our lives as we worship God on our altars. Why do we need a sacrificial altars? Why we don't we do not need a sacrificial altar anymore. Why we don't need a sacrificial altar anymore in our life, families and friends? Hallelujah. Do you remember the same? Why we don't need these things anymore, brothers and sisters? The Old Testament sacrificial system was about animals' blood taking away sin. Instead, it was about sending sin to the people back to God every year. This is why repentance was such an important part of the Old Testament sacrificial system. Read more about the days of atonement. Hallelujah. However, all of this changed when Jesus Christ came along. All these sacrifices making to the altar changed when Jesus Christ came along in the picture. Yes. Take a look at why Jesus Christ sacrifice is superior. Hey, take a look. Jesus Christ's sacrifice was far superior to any animal sacrifice that would have been done or made. This is why, for one thing, his sacrifice was voluntary. He did not have to die, but he chose to die. Furthermore, his sacrifices were once for all. Animal sacrifice had not to be made over and over again. But Jesus Christ's sacrifice took away our sins once and for all. Finally, we must, the most important, most important that Jesus Christ is the high priest. This means we do not need a mediator. Priest, he is the mediator between we and God. And the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Because this, we no longer need physical authors. Like in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ is our mediator. And his sacrifice was far superior to any animal sacrifice that we could have been. Spiritual altars in the Bible. In the Old Testament, physical altars are used for offer sacrifices to God. A new confident spiritual altars are to erect our hearts as God. A way to connect with God, brothers and sisters, to erect our heart to God. So, what exactly is a spiritual altar? A spiritual altar is a place where we offer our prayers and worship to God. That is our spiritual altar. Where we worship, where we give our worship and our praises unto God, that is our spiritual altar in our days now, brothers and sisters. It is also a place where we can go to connect with Him on a deeper level. Yes, on a deeper level, we we'll go and meet with God on a deeper level, brothers and sisters. Just as physical altars were used in the old conf covenant, spiritual altars are also used in the new covenant as the way for us to offer our lives to God. Every day, we're we'll crying to God, we have our altar, we go there and worship God, we go there in prayer. We go on our knees, we go closer to our God, we lock our doors, go and face God and talk to God in our fast and our prayer. We go in our in our rooms and close the door and see the face of God, brothers and sisters, to meet our Lord and have a very deep relationship with our God on a deeper level. Yes, it's an offering we made to offer our lives to God there. When we erect spiritual altars in our hearts. We are walking. We are making a commitment to God. We are saying that we want to have a relationship with Him. We are giving Him control of our life and asking Him for His guidance. And we, when we do this, we we can show we can be sure that we will be 
He will always be with us because we have offered our time and our sacrifices unto the Lord, seeking his faith diligently, fast and pray, knocking at the door of the heart of Jesus Christ, meeting, meeting him, making time for him. When we do this, we can show that he will be with us always. He will never leave us, brothers and sisters, or not forsake us. If we are looking to build a spiritual altar in your life, there are a few things you can do. First, you need to find a quiet place where you can be alone with God. This can be anywhere you feel comfortable. It can be in your home, in your backyard, or even in a park. Once you have found a place, you need to what? sit down and spend time talking to God. Telling Him what? It's in your heart. Brothers and sisters, you're talking to God directly now because of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shared on the cross of Calvary. We can go directly to God and speak to our, our Creator on one-on-one, -on -one, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It also, you sit down, brothers and sisters, and spend time talking to God. Tell Him what is in your heart. Worship your God. Give Him thanks for all He has done for you. Then simply listen, listen for the voice where, see what he has to say to you as well. After you talk to him, he also needs to talk to you. Building spiritual altars is a great way to grow closer to God. If you have never done that before, I encourage you to try it. You may be surprised. At how much change in your relationship with God will become, brothers and sisters, in building a spiritual altar. Hallelujah. Will make you to get closer to your makeup and your God. Very closer. It will change your spiritual life, brothers and sisters, to get more closer to God, to get intimate with God, to build, make time for God in your life, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Repairing a godly altar. Repairing. And restoring an altar of God is something that we should be taking, something we need to be taking seriously. We see Elijah doing this very thing in First King 8, 18 31. When he when he confront the prophet of Bay on Man Kamen, Elijah first repaired the altar. Hallelujah. Elijah repaired the altar first, an altar. In this pair, or that has been abandoned for years, can easily fall into spiritual room. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just want to say thank you, O God, for your words that have come this evening to your people concerning authors, how we need to be our spiritual authors to be a relationship with our God, that we can connect to him on a daily basis, speak to him, take fast and pray. It can be in your room, in your yard, in your backyard, farm place where you can talk to God. Let your family farm place that they can meet God at the point of their name. Call his name, worship him, talk to him. And after you talk to him, how to give him time also to listen for him to speak to you as well. Father, I thank you for your word concerning why we need a sacrificial, why we do not need a sacrificial altar in our days. We only need the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because his blood has paid it all on the cross for you and I. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I want to take thank you for your word that have come to the hearing of your people on this platform, trusting God in our generation. I take thank you to God that you bless us in this new week. Yes. Bless us in the new week, oh God. Hallelujah. May God bless us in the new week, families and friends. As we go on our daily basis, may God keep us, uphold us, guide us and protect us from harm and danger out there. Jesus paid all the cross for you and our brothers and sisters. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. He's a mighty healer. He cleansed the leper. When the leper saw him, they started walking. When the cripple saw him, they started walking. When he touched the leper, they were cleansed from the leprosy. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ paid it all on the cross. We need to be saved. We need to believe God. We need to serve God. We need to seek the kingdom of God. 
Firstly, his righteousness and everything be added unto you and our families and friends. And second Chronicle 5, someone they say, My people who are called by my name is the Shawa. Humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn away from the wickedness. I'll go away here for heaven and I will forgive the sins and I will heal the lands. But us and so we need to ask God for forgiveness. Yes, that you forgive our sins and you will heal our land. God wants us to cry to Him. We need to cry to God, promise my friends. We need to cry to this God. Every day we come before God, we need to ask Him for mercy. That we are sinners, that you forgive our sins. That we are sinners, we have fallen short of His glory. That He will have mercy upon us. He will wash us wet as snows. He will keep us on trials and temptation. He will direct our footsteps as we seek a face diligently and walk into His statues in obedience and sacrifice in the peak of the cross to follow Jesus Christ of Nazareth from his friends. I will never, never be the same. Nobody come to him and remain the same. Nobody that made Jesus at the point of the knee in the life remain the same. The encounter, when you encounter Jesus, your life can never be the same. There is a change since you have been born and accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and personal Savior. It is a great change. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I come to the end of the video, I want to say thank you to God for those who have subscribed to this platform. I bless you for the lives and the family. I thank you for your provision over us. I thank you for your grace over us. I thank you for your favor over us. I thank you for your direction and your protection. I thank you for providing for us food for us to eat, oh God. We thank you for opening doors and blessing for who you are. I bless you for opening doors and making way where there seems to be no way. I thank you and I honor you now forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and blessed Holy Spirit. Peace, brothers and sisters. The closing prayer will be taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 24 to 26, that says, May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord make a face to shine upon you, may the Lord be gracious unto you, may he lift all his countenance upon us and give us his peace as surpassing all understanding. Peace and live with you, brothers and sisters. Until another live video, Shalom. Have a blessed new week. Peace.